Welcome back everyone, I'm Brother Mocha Lover of course, and we're looking at a pretty nice A Brotherhood here. Last time we took out quite a few uh, degenerates around here, we're currently in a border war with the West Russian Revolutionary Front, and with our focus, Operation Gamma will soon begin against Gorky. Oh wait, Gorky. Oh, wait. Gorky. Oh, it's over here. For some reason I thought it was Orenburg. What the heck? Regardless, a couple comments to go through. First of all, someone asked, does Wales have a focus tree? That's actually a very good question. Does Wales have a focus tree? And the answer is... Yes, it does. Under Emerus Thomas. I don't know anything about Wales, except that they sometimes have very, very long words that are difficult to pronounce, so I should never, ever pronounce them. Gosh, victory? Um, so yeah, they do have somewhat of a focus tree. Ambeith? Ambeith? I have no idea. Preparing for the worst. Preparing for an election. It would be cool to do a campaign where Wales decides to conquer all of England. So, cool. Another one is play as modernist Tomsk. I played as Tomsk once. Uh, let's see. I played with Shostakovich, the musician dude. Yeah, I totally forgot that these guys were Gorky over here. Uh, and it does cancel this. It does cancel the, the raid, which kind of sucks because we're doing actually kind of well. Oh, look at that. A little bit of manpower, huh? Oh, how do we get that manpower? Oh, we must have coordinated area, maybe. Okay, not bad. Hey, uh, let's see. Let's take a look. Maybe? Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay, well, hold on. Oh, it's because they're taking our territory and we don't need to put our men in there anymore. That's right. That's not bad. Not bad. So, the actual... Uh, that was kind of good, kind of not good. They have fortified divisions, Gorky. Let them take the territory for now. Do they actually? Have, they actually have tanks and IFVs, huh? Was not expecting that, and they actually beat the snot out of us right now. Brotherhood needs blood. Uh, let's see. If you want to read about this, go right ahead. We've read about this before, so um, I don't want to do that until we can take. Oh, we don't need to really see this one yet. Oh, scavenge for loot. Oh, we'd like to do that one. This one. Well, now we can do this. 80, no, 9,500. If we wait and take these guys over, it might be better, but let's just go and get more manpower now. We could honestly probably use it. Yarrow League, alright, let's go and move on in. Actually, you guys try to keep these guys in place, and you just cut these guys off and go to Gorky. Because these look, these guys look like they can probably actually take us out pretty fairly easily, so... If we don't do anything about this. Just go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. We might get encircled here, maybe, maybe not. But if we can circle and cut them off from supplies like we just did... That would be great. Ooh, let's go and go there. And they have no divisions in Gorky. The Krasnoi Sormo of factory captured. We've acquired the Gorky tank factory, the largest producer of armored vehicles in West Russia. This factory is a vital part of the Soviet industrial production and saw heavy usage during the West Russian War. In the aftermath of the WRRF's collapse, it fell into the hands of Nikolai Avarin and his divisions of bandits, who used the factory to pump out tanks for the raids on Black's Commissariat of Muscovy. An ignoble fate for such an important piece of military infrastructure. Tanks are rare among the warlords of Russia, making anyone who can produce them a force to be reckoned with, and making the factory a highly sought after prize. Now that it belongs to us, we can utilize Gorky's tank factory for a higher purpose than stealing scraps from the Germans. Regaining the capacity to produce tanks will be another step towards achieving the military capabilities of a full fledged nation, and another step towards declaring a final victory in Russia. Oh man, I just stretched my back, and oh my goodness, holy cow, it popped a lot of stuff. Anyways. Well, let's come back to the line with these guys. We're going to need more divisions on the line now. One at a time is good enough for us. And look at all the stuff we've done already. Tanks for the Aryans. IFE's not bad. Sweet the city, though. Ooh. Some damage, but guns. With the motor bandits cleansed from the city, we now hold one of the greatest population centers of Western Russia by the throat. Our brothers shall go street by street, house by house, room by room through Gorky, killing the impure and burning their homes to the ground. Any and all signs of resistance shall be put down, and those humans who have the audacity to stand against Aryans will be made to regret their choice. When the Brotherhood is done, no trace of the Slavic stain shall remain within the city. All weapons found within Gorky will be stripped from their owners to ensure that they submit to the will of the true Ubermensch. Where there was once a center of degeneracy, cowardice, and greed, a new city will be made. It shall become a mo monument to the bravery, diligence, and supremacy of the one true race. Gorky will be made pure, one way or another. Uh, oh, actually, oh, we can go back and do the raid against these guys. Oh, we might. We might do that. Oh, wait, what happened? Whoa, what happened here? You got a little long. You actually took out the people republics of Magna Magnitogorsk. Cool. Alright, time to do the other one. 
Tanks for the Aryans, the tank, highly mobile and utterly unstoppable in its conquest, is a perfect vehicle for the Aryan. It is a masterpiece of engineering, as we are a masterpiece of genetics. Now that the scum of Gorky has been smashed into pieces, its tanks, degraded by their use for pity theft, lie in our hands. The Reich drowned the East in blood with its tank army. As we aspire to climb to its level, it is best that we learn from its examples. Oh, actually, can we do one of these guys instead? No. I still want more loot, though. Wow. Oh, we're integrating so many places at once, which really sucks. Oh, we need it. Yeah. Oh. Come on, Jatka. Come on. We've got 75 guys in the manpower reserve. That's not bad. 25 now. Um, 39. Okay, it's going up. Even though it's not the beginning of the month. I'm not sure really why. It's because we... Huh. 75. How's it go back up? I mean, this is taking forever to do, but... Hmm. We can try it again. Let's we'll try it. And now it's, it's stuck. But let's go and see this. Logistics. Good anti-tank. Good, Really good infantry equipment. Well, that's a lot of artillery. Not going to lie. We don't have the manpower for this, but that would be really good to do. But regardless, our own Blitzkrieg. During the West Russian War, our great fury, Guthrum Wagner, saw how the Germans fought, how they countered every attack and drove back the cowardly Russians. They called their method of war Blitzkrieg or Lightning War. If we are to prove our status as true Aryans, we must also harness the power of lightning for our brotherhood. With the vehicles of motor bandits now at our disposal, we can finally achieve this. Our warriors shall strike like thunderbolts against the Slavic hordes, riding atop great panzers like the Germans did before us. The brotherhood shall roll across Russia like an iron tide, the third and final Aryan conquest of the East. Already the men have begun integrating the captured panzers into the formations, painting the sacred swastika under the turrets to reclaim them as weapons of the master race. We will prove it that it is the Aryan, not the Slav, who is the master of the armored warfare. Unless someone else named Siegfried Schultz has something to say about it, of course. Well, these guys just ate up the M Nation. I'm not sure how to pronounce that too well, but the M Nation. Initiate raid. Probably a bad idea. But maybe, you know what? Maybe they'll give in. I kind of doubt it, though. I kind of really doubt it. Please give in. Please? Maybe? We have one loot. Okay, they give in. Just ask and they'll give in. Okay, more industrial equipment. Yes, please. Now, we could do that. I think I'm actually... Let's go and get Gorky. I think it's a little bit more important to get Gorky. Actually, now, now we're losing political power. Well, crud. Our own Blitzkrieg and then Operation Hesvelga. The weak and decadent Soviet Union is a perfect example of a Slavic polity. Corrupt, depraved, and intent on economic inefficiency. They couldn't even purge their own undesirables correctly. When the German rampaged uh, through Russia, they shattered the Union and rightfully released us from our Slavic chains. They awakened us to the state of the mind that is required to ascend to the status of Aryan, abandoning our weak Slavic heritage. However, one of the most frustrating parts about Western Russia is that the Soviet Union's rump state, run by decrepit old Slavic kleptocrats, kleptocrats, still scratches out a meager existence in the far north. It's an insult to our cause that our inferiors still cling to the empty promises of Slavic communism. We must end the struggle for good. Oh, look, another division. The first Panzers. Panzers. Very cool. Some of our commanders hoped that entering the driver's seat of an armored fighting vehicle would awaken something in the Aryan bloodline, a latent talent for the motorized warfare that resides in all Ubermensch. Unfortunately, this does not seem to have occurred. Several vehicles stalled out or broke down shortly after our test crews finally got them to start. One driver even managed to get his reclaimed Panzer to start, but, um, but proving unable to work through the steering or the brakes. Crashed through a building before driving it into a ditch. It seems that even the German soldiers must learn their mastery over Blitzkrieg, not just inherit it. This has been a source of great frustration and disappointment for both the Brotherhood's military commanders and the most trusted racial scientists. Man, it's going to be wild being a racial scientist. Luckily, some Panzer operators from the ranks of the motor bandits have proven to be of superior blood and are more willing than to train their fellow Aryans in return for expedited admittance into the Brotherhood. Some members of the Brotherhood have protested this, claiming that these men have not purged their Slavic corruption as every Aryan must do. What these fools do not recognize is that by mastering Germ Germanic warfare, these men were already close to pure Aryan status before the Brotherhood even liberated them. Already, this decision has borne fruit. Every day, more Aryans are being retrained in the art of Blitzkrieg. Every day, more Panzers roll out of the factories, ready to carry brave warriors of the master race into battle against the unclean hordes. That seems kind of wild if we can actually produce tanks, a few tanks every day. Our commanders have been eager to adopt the Panzers into their strategies. They've modified their once infantry-focused doctrines to accommodate quicker, and more powerful strikes concentrated on small points of the enemy line. Soon the Brotherhood's armies will be so magnificent that even the Germans shall admire the military prowess of our race. No one can hope to match the Aryan strategists. Oh, it's a strategic theorem. That's the one we're going. Nice. And... Yeah, IFVs... Honestly, not really worth it. These are oh, these are definitely more expensive, but they're worth it. Oh, they're worth it. Cool. Uh, still 12 combat width. We, we don't have any manpower, though. The Battle for Barcelona. Iberia sets us come. We do have a cup of coffee here. Butter pecan coffee, because 
We Aryans deserve the best, right? Ten days left for Bashkiria? Oh, very, very good. Very, very good. Novo Siberia unifies Central Siberia. Well, I guess that's the first one here. Wow. Cheetah, Divine Mandate, and Irkutsk. Kaiselorda. Are these the authoritarian soldiers under Mami Shuli? Mami united them. Oh, we went to war immediately. Oh. Well, crud. I didn't realize that. Go ahead and go in if we can. Cut all these guys off if you can. Keep these guys in place, too, so. If we can cut these three divisions off, that'd be awesome. Very cool. Well, go ahead and move on in. Actually, you're not going to do that. You're going to go right here, here, here. No, hold, please. Hold, please. Ah, excuse me, sir. Please hold. Thank you. Come again. Very nice. Uh, you're not going to do that either. You're going to come up here and do that, that, that. As you guys are going to go there, 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 there. We're going to circle these divisions if we possibly can. You are not going to help attack. You are actually going to come up here, 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 and then there. Boom. There you go. Hopefully we can do well. Obviously our attacks are not going great, but hey, you know what? All that matters is that we keep them stalled for now. Oh, look at that manpower! Look at that! We actually got some manpower back! <gasps> Do we integrate Vyatka? Oh man, Vyatka must have a lot of people in it. Oh, that's very nice. Oh, we might get in circle here too. That would be quite bad for us. We're only attacking because we have to right now. I just want these three divisions dead. That's all I want. And these guys too. And these, and that guy too. And then, uh, that one up here too. Not bad. They're still holding out somehow. I'm not sure how. Like, why are they still holding out? Please give in. Yeah, we're going to be suffering a lot of loss here, but we do have some manpower, which is actually really nice. Let's take a look. 17, 69, not bad. Um, now that's not ideal. Vyatka must have had a... Oh, look, even more manpower! Look at that! Nice, finally! Scavenge for loot. I guess we could try that. I don't think we'll actually be able to get that done, but whatever. Yeah, I'll take... Yeah, we must have caught another place. Nice, finally! And we don't need any extra things to do anything about that. You know what? If we can't win, just beat them up, if possible. Come on, guys. You're so disappointing. I know you're attacking over river, but still. Come on. There we go. Don't let him move. There we go. We got that, that guy right there. Yeah, Vyakas must have a lot of manpower. And the other uh, they'll stay too. Oh, come on. Guys, you're supposed to encircle. Not just, not just fight them. Don't get encircled yourself. What the heck? That's a lot, that's a lot of manpower, not gonna lie. That is quite a bit. And I'll gladly take it. Come on. They're just... Untermensch, come on. Oh, another, oh, okay, yeah, I'll grab another one. We can make divisions pretty quickly. Love it. Come here and then go there. There we go. Finally, you're doing something here, huh? We're missing something here. Resistance, occupation. No, just a lot, a lot of high resistance. Of course, we probably spent a lot of manpower actually trying to, uh, like, r put down resistance, so. Alright, so we've lost a lot of guys. We lost 14,000, they lost 41,000, that's not bad. Actually, how many divisions do they have? Three! Wow! See? Even though those attacks were pretty costly, they still did okay. And the Siktivkar Arsenal captured from Komi. We've secured the Arsenal of Siktiv Siktivkar, a major stockpile of military weaponry that could prove decisive in securing victory in West Russia. Previously in the hands of the West Russian Revolutionary Front, or Komi, it came into possession of the fledgling Komi Republic, of course, when the WRRF fled. Siktivkar, Komi used the Arsenal to maintain order inside its notoriously unstable capital and to establish itself as a regional power, but even without full access to it, wasn't able to prevent its loss. The arsenals contained firearms, explosive tanks, and chemical fat weaponry, a fearsome collection for any would-be conqueror. Having taken it, we had a hefty advantage, proudly wielding the weapons that will bring us victory in West Russia. In the perpetual resource shortage of the post-Soviet order, gun for gun counts, our control over the arsenal will afford us all the equipment we need to oppose our authority over the region. Locked and loaded. We lose diversion, recovery rate, and war support. We get more attack on core territory and defense on core territory. That's, uh, that's a unique one, I'd say. Alright, you don't need to keep doing that. You're going a little crazy there. Pakistan becomes independent. I don't think anyone really cares right now, though. But we killed off so many enemies. That's nice. Look at that budget, or the GDP. Oh. Can we integrate any other place? No? Okay. I think I'm done purchasing Zlatao's equipment at this point. Everyone's moving in, having a good time. Can you guys just like focus on going up to here? 
Because there's not that many divisions left, but they're really annoying trying to get all these guys. It's really annoying. Alright, I did say we have coffee, but I'm not even drinking it. Oba Commando Brauschitstadt. Nice. Ukraine's looking pretty good, though. And Gross Germanisches Reich. So I wanted to recommend I do play as Germany's Ballman sometime. And I do, and I will. Actually, they were. I really want them to be my next Germany campaign, but they might not be. We'll see what happens. Spoiler. They might be. They might not be. Euro Military District. Oh. It's kind of a mess over here. Oh, Siberian Workers Federation. Hello. Last fight. Alright, still finding guys around here, huh? Well, that's not cool. How about you tell them to go home? Go home into the grave. Oh, look at this. 83, not bad. Better industrial equipment. Nice! The economy is doing great, and new reforms in industrial subsidizing have resulted in the shipping of updated industrial equipment across the country. Products are being produced quicker and cheaper. The further progress of mechanization into the once ossified industrial world will prove a boon to worker and manager alike. No more long, horrible hours. No more sub products screwed in by imperfect human hands. Industry continues to march forward. These were a long time coming, however. Increases in budget and... Uh, the renewed focus on what our industries are making have increased support for much-needed renovation of our country's industrial equipment. Nice! Look at that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's go ahead and grab some industrial investments, because that's usually pretty good to do. Ooh, actually, you know what? No. I'm going to go secure, secure control. I want more stability, because eventually we're not going to have enough stability. Oh, and we have this too. Beautiful. Large-scale exercises? Yeah, why not? Yeah, Vyatka has quite a few guys. That's no wonder we got a lot more manpower that way. And what are we on? One party stay. That's I like that. Hey, we beautiful, my friends. Beautiful. Let's see. Political military laws. We do have the two-year draft. Volunteer only disarm nation. So yeah, that's weird. How much manpower we have? By oh, 143 percent. That makes sense actually. That's that's a lot. Oof. I love it though. I'll take more. If you got any more, I'll take it. Gladly take it. My friends, we've done it. Neutralized remnants. We have defeated the cowardly Reds in battle. Their cowardly soldiers flee for their lives. They never stood a chance against the might of the Brotherhood. Their lands and people are now ours to do with as we please. All that remains is to hunt down and destroy the remaining Slavic bandits who foolishly continue to resist the inevitable. Brotherhood patrols will sweep across the countryside, searching every forest and village for those seeking to oppose or escape our rule. Any town that might harbor a terrorist or will be severely punished. Captured bandits will be executed publicly as, as warning to any of those who might think of the following in their footsteps. The people of the North will learn the same lessons as their th southern brethren. Obey or die. The final destiny of the Aryan race is within sight, and we must have the full subservience of our domain to reach it. Beautiful. And actually, can we raid someone before... Oh, we gotta... Oh, we gotta integrate all these places. That's gonna be a lot more manpower, too, but... Can I, I want to raid. Can I raid before we kill? Oh, hello. Kazakh Socialist Republic. Now that might not be bad. Oh, we are getting more stability. Go ahead and do. Where is this? Archangelus is pretty good to do. Honestly, we've got to do them all, anyways. Do Komi next. And we're losing political power every day. Hmm. We're going to say that's ideal. So if we can raid these guys and get them done, we can do at least one more of these, which would be great. Okay, this takes so long. Neutralize the remnants, and then the red idol smashed. Those adherents are dead or enslaved. The state of the Bolshevik cult that once ruled the north remains. Statues of Marx, Lenin, and Voroshilov have still occupied town squares of Archangels to Ukta, providing a remainder to the inhabitants of the past we seek to erase. This cannot be tolerated. The idols must be reduced to rubble. The old portraits and red flags will be torn down and burned in bonfires. The ashes scattered to the winds. All memory of the Soviet Union and its failures will be destroyed. New monuments will be raised, honoring the failure and the brave soldiers who swept aside the Slavs and reclaimed the East for its rightful people. Russia is a failed nation. The Russians are a failed people. Their legacy is no use to us. The Aryan Brotherhood, though, has triumphed over the Untermensch, and now we shall record the true history of this land as we see fit. Only the failure, failure of the communists will be remembered. We lose stability, but we get a little bit more political power. It's not bad. Okay, can we do this? Go ahead and do that. I don't have any divisions these guys have, but hopefully it's not much. Under Mommy. Leader Mommy. Cool. That's a lot of manpower. Way more than us, but we have double their factories. And they have five to seven divisions, including some cavalry dudes. Cool. Oh, 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 we can also form the purified peoples, too. If we do this, we get another research slot, which is good. A new focus tree shall become available upon resolution of the Onega issue. Overextended administration. I don't want to get that overextended administration yet, and I don't want to finish this focus tree yet because I do want to get down through all here first, maybe. Red Dusk. Well, I don't think there's any rush for us to get down there, so I want to finish this focus tree first before we get that extra research slot. Sounds kind of weird for me to say, but hey, whatever. I think we're ready. 
How strong are these guys? Oh, that 10 combat with, that's pretty much, they refuse tribute. All right. Thank you very much. The end of Bolshevism. The armies of the Revolutionary Front may have outnumbered us, but the communists never stood a chance against the unmatched combat ability of the Brotherhood fighting man. So entrenched was Bolshevism in the heart of the Slav that only true Aryan warriors could annihilate their delusions of grandeur and remind them that their place is not as a master, but as a slave. The collapse of the Front ended all organized resistance toward domination of Western Russia. The Aryan Brotherhood has banished the specters of Bolshevism and Slavic tyranny back across the Urals and once more. The lands of Western Russia are nearly united under the land of the Fuhrer, but it's not enough. Though the Red Menace may plague us no more, there are countless other threats to our race, both in Russia and abroad. We must never cease our crusade against the traitors and the Untermensch. Russia shall be Aryan. Russia, of course, shall be ours. Alright, at this point, I think we're doing pretty darn well. I'm going to go ahead and expand these guys, because they deserve it. We should have enough manpower for this too, so. Equipment. Tanks not looking bad. Anti-tank looking pretty bad. Raid successful? Of course it has been. Infantry equipment looking pretty bad as well. Hmm. Seize all that we can use. Absolutely. Absolutely. Next up, we shall do agricultural methods. Very good. Very, very good. And after this one, uh, actually, when's the next research done? That it'll be a while. Execute the traitors. Relics of the past. If you'd like to read about this one, go right ahead. But relics or execute the traitors after this. Russian or Finn doesn't matter. A subhuman is a subhuman, and those deviants and traitors who would seek to appease and work with such filth must be destroyed. The lands of Onega are filled with examples of such barbarism. Some aided the Finns' savage attempts to decolonize Onega or assist in fighting against the Brotherhood's reclamation of the region. Look, we got a whole civilian factory. During the decades of Finnish occupation, others committed such atrocities such as race mixing and raising half-breed children. These crimes shall not go unpunished. Each and every criminal and abomination shall be dragged into the street, where the crimes will be exposed to their neighbors. The people of Onega shall be forced to watch as racial justice finally comes to their homes. There will be no mercy shown to such cowardly subhumans. Their kind will be erased from Onega, just as they have been in all other lands the Brotherhood has liberated. The Red Dusk fell. As men scrambled down narrow hallways and even up narrower st staircases, Alexei Novikov remained petrified. Each pump of his heart was a bludgeon, beating suffocation into the very fiber of his beating. After minutes of paralysis, Alexei finally stirred. His feeble legs found themselves wobbling. He lurched to an infirm posture suspended over a railing for support. Someone shouted, Comrade Nik Novikov! Push the mother effin button. Fighting the overwhelming pain in his chest, Alexei leaned sloppily towards the console to his right, mustering what little remained inside to raise the ship's anchors. I have done it, he shouted as tears welled in his eyes. A sudden explosion followed the exclamation, finishing his descent towards the cold steel floor. Panic, then unconsciousness. A gunshot woke him up, but a severe concussion prevented full awareness. Alexei's flaring eyes could see the black uniformed men approaching, and on some subconscious level he understood. With little time remaining, memories flooded his mind, a serene picture of book to quench his anxiety. He thought first of his mother, the, his, her sandy blonde hair and soothing tone, comforting him in the candlelight of their Moscow apartment. He tried to savor the moment, remember the boyhood stories she had told him of Lenin and the revolution. However, the historical details evaded him, far less potent than the woman herself. The man grew closer in his peripheral vision, punctuating their summary executions of his comrades with disgusting jeers of Untermensch. They would not destroy his newfound serenity. He thought next of the early days in P Plastek. Sleeping next to his bunkmates, he ner both nervous and excited to serve. Like the stories of old, before he f his family had fled, he too would serve his people. A sense of purpose in the chaos. His the pistol swung before his eyes, and they finally closed for the last time. The revolution would die that day, its last believer executed by the true Aryans in the port of Akhangelsk. So ends the revolution. Wow, look at that civilian war support. Plus 35% stability, and plus 40% war support. Holy cow. So, we need to be the regional stage to do that. Okay, so this does not screw up our focus tree just yet. Good to know. And welcome, as the Aryan Brotherhood unifies West Russia. If you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. Let us hope such lunatics don't get much further. Lunatics! We're the chosen people. Lunatics, we shall have them hanged for that. Oh, 0 0.06 billion. Hmm, not bad. Ooh, we're done with this for now. It is 65. Let's go do some industrial stuff, such as civilian construction. Money-wise. Ooh, warlord recruitment's gone. Civilian spending. Hmm. Minus 4.74 billion, eh? We can't even build anything right now. Wow. That suckerinos. Oh, that's because we have the whole stuff. You know what? I can't even build. Oh, maybe I should not cut military spending, but whatever. Invade Onega. Yeah. Request to finish negotiations. There's no negotiations here. No negotiations. Regional development is good to do. Warlord development, secure control, getting more stability would be good. Agricultural methods, that's very nice. We still need to do all this stuff, which is good. And we'll be losing some political power. We actually have how much? 24 point something, maybe? Maybe not. Prepare for war. 
exert influence on the southern Euros. That would be very good to do as well. Gainey, you're next. Yeah, sure, not a slash in the trade budget. Hey, 300,000. Almost a third of a million. Nice. 46 billion, not bad. We have no debts. We have a deficit. Stocklecker wins in Ausland. Same, oh, same old from Ausland, huh? We prefer independence with poverty to servitude with plenty. Nice. And welcome to the purified Aryan Brotherhood. Alright, they've shown their true colors. Onwards and upwards. They have up to 16 divisions in the Republic of Finland. Sport equipment, go ahead and have you guys come here too. But you're going to keep moving around, Onega. Good. Keep getting better gun stuff. It's just, we need more soft attack and stuff, stuff like that. There's only one guy's moving here, huh? No wonder we're losing. Would you guys like to move in and then go there, maybe? There you go. Keep the pressure on them pretty high as we're going to encircle and destroy. There you go. Oh, they're completely cut off. These guys are. Nice. Now we've finally done it. Beautiful. Caffeine flow. Luxuries such as tea and coffee were only once rare commodities during the chaos of the late 50s and 60s. They're only available to those with money and connections to utterly reach out for the most of the population. However, as Russia stabilized, access to the global economy has drastically improved, and now once rare commodities are being imported in increasingly large amounts. Chocolate, fruits, foreign wines, and of course, coffee and tea. Now, access to caffeinated beverages is no longer a luxury or restricted to the privileged few, but an increasingly common, if so pricey, drink of choice for our many of our correct Aryan citizens. A toast to our future successes. Absolutely. Alright, so, you guys come over here. There we go. Move in, because they are not available, and we have encountered four enemy divisions within our lands. We barely get any political power. Oof. Go right there. Keep them in place. Do not let them move. Do not let them move. Good. These four divisions do not know what they have unleashed. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. Come on, go. You've got to move. Move those chubby little legs. My train is on fire. That's good. Ah, we found enemies. It's probably best to stop doing that. Still, three enemy divisions are good to kill off here. Nope. You will not leave. You will die here because you chose to do so. We should probably make some tanks. But if we want tanks, we got to get some APCs in. So, keep one, one for now. Uh, do we need anything else around here? Artillery? Alright, we need some artillery. There you go. Crush them. How are you losing? You're not going to be able to rescue this division, though. Nope, they died. They died. They're dead. Oh, Finland. How many divisions do they have left now? 7 to 11. Not bad. Not bad at all. As long as we can concentrate our forces, we'll do fine. These guys, though. They're going to be kicked down a notch. If I can take out this tile here, we can circle this division and kill it. Let these guys move down. Come on, and... Boom. Now, we're still using light infantry here, but it's not great. But they will they still serve their purpose. They still have a purpose. Just like our slaves. You're gonna help out. You're gonna kill them off right there. And you're gonna move right on in. Come on. Break them up. Shatter them. Boom. Kill them off. Right here. Beautiful. Another division shall perish. Uh Guys, I recommend... Don't even let them move. I want you to break them. I don't want them to live. Now, you don't let these guys move either. You guys are actually going to come over here, and if you can, get to Kemi. Nice. Very good. Did we do something here? Purchase military access? No, thank you. Oh, they actually want to beat us back, huh? I see how it is. Seize fire? No. I'm not even going to read it. Nope. And then you chose poorly. Your uh, <clears throat> initiatives to deal with us, or deal with the proper territory of Russia, shall be met with a lot of dead folks on your side. 
Sports rivalry. Or rivalry. While the successful unification of Western Russia and efforts at integration have done much to unite the people under a common banner, fierce rivalries between the many regions of our nation still remain while the era of armed warlordism may have ended. Our people are finding new ways to act on these rivalries. One such method seems to be hockey. The recent game between the Gorky Tankers and the Kazan, a.k. Bars, have ended in chaos following a narrow 4-2 win for the Bars in the first game of the season. The people of Gorky have refused to take the feet lying down, kicking off a series of drunken demonstrations. The protests which la later led to rioting involving an attempt to prevent the AK bars from returning to the hotel, def the defacing of several locations across the city with offensive slurs against Tartars, and many incidents of looting and vandalism. The damages following the event have totaled to a considerable sum, and many are concerned that it may have set a worrying precedent for future games, especially as the hockey season begins in earnest. At least it's better than shooting each other. Well, depends who's shooting and who who's doing what. Alright, Fortress Buster. And you got an upgrade, but not really. Wagner, anything here? No, so be it. You really wanted to die here, didn't you? You really wanted to die. How are you not winning there? Hold on. You're going to force the attack. You are going to win or you will die and perish like the slaves. Help the attack. Help the attack. Come on. Good. Crush them. Nice. At this point, we might be able to do very, very well, actually. You guys go all the way over to here. Oh. You guys go there. Try to encircle some guys if you can. That'd be quite good if we could. Oh, you wanted to rescue them? They perished because of your insolence. You're going to help attack. We don't want to lose too many soldiers there. It's very good. You, you will not move. Force them, force them. Cut these guys off. Do not let them move. Come on, get over there before they do. Come on, move, move, move. Come on! No, oh, these are really not Aryans, are they? Aryans would have moved faster. Hmm. What a shame. Come on, let him back in. Or go there, and then come up around here. Come on, keep moving, keep moving. Force it. Force the attack. Force them to die. Force them, force them, force them, force them. Oh, good. Oh, auto supply, civilian. That's no, not bad. I'm gonna grab this one, though. More organization and stuff like that. That's good stuff. Don't even worry about that. You come here. Let them come in. Good. Ignorance will be their downfall, and the Brotherhood needs blood. Ooh, was that worth it? Do we have the thing yet? Yes, we do. Go. Cool. 19th. God dang, we got a lot of population here. Thank you, Western Russia. Another division shall perish. There are eight divisions left in total, perhaps. Now, if I do remember, when I played this before... Finland, you can't actually annex Finland. It sucks. I wish you could. But you can't actually annex them. The game will force you to white piece them out eventually. Go for, uh... Vipurity. We're getting close to Brasichstadt. Nice, we're almost to the Germans. Actually, we have a quite a big border with the Germans, actually. Good, keep going, guys. Keep going. Some of you are doing great. Some of you guys are pathetic. Also, there was another comment from uh, yesterday. Or, from the last video, saying that, uh... Hyperborea is the ideology that one guy practices. Okay, cool. Whatever. That sounds fine with me. I don't really care. That's, that's uh, sounds interesting, to say the least. Oh, look at these folks. They think they know what they're doing. They just sealed their fate. I wonder if I can... Can I really get to Helsinki before they do anything? Uh, liquid. Oh, yeah. It's weird. We're playing as the Purified Aryan Brotherhood. Yeah, we are doing super well on our, on our economy. It just goes to show you that uh, previous attempts at con the economic handling of a nation are all crushed by other people. Refuse. No. I'm, I'm headed straight to Helsinki. There's, why would I give up right now? Oh, they're going to maybe... Oh, they might... They... Hmm. Oh, come on. Doesn't matter. I'm still getting Helsinki. I'm grabbing it. I'm, I, we've got the capital. Oh, you've been cut off, but... Go to Turku. How does that not capitulate them? Or, or get that much closer? 
How are they not giving up yet? They've got more divisions now, though, which is not good. I'm not giving up yet. Nope. Come on, keep going. Finland offers conditional, unconditional surrender. Diplomats representing the Finnish government approach us, offering surrender once again. This time, they fully conceded to our demands and are offering hand over Murmansk, Onega, and all of Karelia east of Vipuri. This was to restore the border to its position in 1936 and bring millions of Russians back into the fold. With the rival territory returned to us and all questions of military supremacy definitely settled by our route of the Finnish armed forces, and we have nothing else to gain from the war. It's been a triumphant return of the Russian nation to the world stage, with the reclamation of a valuable region, and a decisive victory over a foreign rival to make it all the better. Let us make peace with the Finns and turn our attention to the east. Karelia was just beginning. Soon all of Russia will be reunited under our flag. Wunderbar. <sighs> but it's not enough. It is not enough. And, eventually, do we wipe peace out with them? Do we not do that? How many more do you want me to kill? Like, seriously. There we go. I went all... I can't believe I... This is the first time I actually probably got all the way to Helsinki. Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Execute the traitors. If you'd like to read about this, go right ahead, because we've already read this once. Beautiful. Oh, there's so much we got to do here, though. Especially the one for GDP growth. The Russian victory in the Northern War. We've crushed the stubborn Finns. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. We should have kept pushing in, but... We were unable to. Seize Finnish arms. The half-breed soldiers that fought against us in the Onega demonstrated the cowardly behavior inherent to tainted and inferior bloodlines, but there is simply no denying the effectiveness of the Finnish supplied weapons they fought with. These weapon designs are clearly only so effective because they are derived from the superior arms produced by the Aryans of Germany that the Finns could only hope to imitate. There's no other plausible explanation for how so barbarous a race could produce such advanced firearms. As Aryans ourselves, it is our responsibility to seek out and confiscate all Finnish weaponry that remains in our reclaimed territory. No rifle or machine gun as effective as the Finnish examples we have found should be in the hands of anyone but an Aryan, for only an Aryan could have such enough skill, discipline, and intelligence to utilize such a weapon properly. You get more infantry equipment, which we don't need. But that's okay. Wow, stability is not looking good. Weekly change, minus 1% because we're trying to integrate all these places. Wow. Technology is going to happen in a while. Besides the corrupt cross, with our expected victories and triumphs over our lessers throughout the Western Russia, it's becoming more and more clear that we're beginning to attain the greatness of the Aryan, despite our struggles and the measures that we've had to take to maneuver ourselves into the position we are that we find ourselves in now. The recent conquests and achievements that we've attained have made it clear to all but the most ignorant peasant Slav under our heel. We are true Aryans. If this was not true, then how was our victory over the hordes of Tsarists, collaborators, and communists made possible? As true Aryans, we can finally place ourselves beside the hooked cross as equals to the German who, in their infinite wisdom, rampaged rampage through Russia and enlightened our wise few to our true calling. Very good. Still, we cannot produce anything, so we might as well slash the budget. 455 million in liquid reserves. I love it. I'm not going to touch military spending for now, though, because we do need to make more output of just stuff in general, including artillery. But not bad. Really, pretty darn good. There's quite a. Hmm. Roman Kolchak. Yegor Nebogatov. And then... Oh, authoritarian socialism here, huh? A new realm of Aryans. There was a knock at the door. Wagner rushed to open it. Sitting or standing behind the door was a postman holding a large cardboard tube. A delivery for you, mein Führer. Yes, I've got it. Now piss off. Wagner snarled as he almost tore the package out of the postman's hands. He slammed the door to his office shut, sealing himself from the outside world. His generals and counselors and counselors with their incessant updates and questions would have to wait. He'd been patient for weeks, and now his commission was finally here. He removed the cap from the tube and pulled out the rolled-up paper it contained. He hurried over to the table and unfolded it to take it in its full magnificence. Magnificence. Well, that is beautiful, he muttered under his breath. He was looking down at a newly commissioned map of the Aryan Brotherhood's realm. The cartographers had delivered a small but beautiful piece of work. He made it very clear they would have to. He struggled to believe that the massive territory that stretched from Alzengel to Kazakhstan had started from almost nothing, just a tiny scrap of land around the bombed out ruins of Perm. Of course, his race superiority had meant that this conquest was inevitable, but gazing down at the map, seeing the Brotherhood standing proud next to Germany and her colonies, it made him realize the huge odds he had triumphed like, over to build a pure nation in such a chaotic and impure land. He could help but smile somehow, he was sure the great Fuhrer was looking down on him with pride. He glanced on the eastern side of the map past the Urals. There were no nations shown there, just a black area labeled the Slavisha Anarchy. There was still work to be done. Russia was not yet cleans or safe for its people, but the Brotherhood had proven the Aryan race is unstoppable, and they did not rest as long as there was a single subhuman or untermensch staining the land of old Russia. A storm is coming to the east.
in which we're still losing stability. The Aryan Code, the Aryan race is triumphant! We've annihilated the squabbling warlords that opposed us and reclaimed Western Russia for our master race. Our momentous uh, accomplishments will be rec recorded in history alongside the triumphs of our German brethren. But despite our victories, it all is not well. Our new realm is unstable. We are a tiny minority of Aryans ruling a huge majority of the Slavic Untermensch, who would like nothing more than to overthrow our young nation and undo everything we've worked so hard to achieve. We cannot allow Russia to be dragged back into a subhuman nightmare, not when it is this close to greatness. Our rule must be secured and a new order must be brought down upon the East. The first steps to achieving this will be to impose a new code of laws. The Aris Aryan Code will make it easier to administer the vast territory we control with the efficiency and ruthlessness that define our race. Up until now, the brother has been an army on the crusade, running wild and destroying the enemy wherever they were found. Now, wow, this was perfect for when we were at war. We now find ourselves at peace, at least for the moment. A much more disciplined approach is needed. Now we will show the world that we are not, ol not only are the Aryans unstoppable on the battlefield, we are on unequal rulers, truly the rightful masters of the earth. Good, as we should be. And we constantly improve our firearms, too. Oh, look. Central Siberian Federation. And who's going to win here? I have no idea. Kind of interested, though. And Cheetah looks like they're doing really, really well now. Wow. Ah, go and do that. Why not? It's not very much, but whatever. Indonesia has won. The good old Aryan Code. Kill them all, huh? Everything's going well except for poverty. Communist Kuhn Finland, the North is red. Time to put down the Finns again. But happy 1966, my fellow brothers. We're doing well. With the Rex Commissariat Austin over there and Obakama the Brashage shot in our west, we cannot be beat. Let's see any more. Oh, quite a few days. So. After the Aryan Code, outlining the castes. One of the most important matters of the Aryan Code must be settled is the issue of racial caste. It's a core tenet of the Brotherhood that the Aryan is superior to the Untermensch. But beyond the matter that of racial hierarchies it has been left up to the interpretation. Some members who treat all who are not full-blooded Aryans and Brotherhood members as equally vile and subhuman. Others have taken a more nuanced approach and created their own systems of ranking bloodlines from true Aryans all the way down to inhuman mongrels. With a number of steps in between, we must clarify the Brotherhood's policy on this issue if we want to secure Aryan dominance of the Russians of Russia and maintain the purity of our blood in a system of categorizing races upon ancestry, physical and mental, mental fortitude, and physical characteristics will be created to define the racial castes. The creation of this system will not be without difficulty. Already, there are clashes between the Aryan hardliners, who argue for a strict definition of Aryanism, and the racial saviors, who are pushing us for a more inclusive policy towards worthy subhumans. We must put an end to the squabbling now. The devil's in the details. For the last time, I don't care about the hair color. I have dark hair, and I'm more Aryan than any of you snakes. But I heard the Germans believe you aren't a real Aryan unless you're blonde. Are you seriously suggesting that Germans are that stupid? Because that's borderline treason if you are. I have half a mind to execute you right now if you don't shut up. This sort of arguing has become common among the Brotherhood's leadership in recent days. With Western Russia finally united under Aryan leadership, the time has come to answer several unsettled questions. Regarding the Brotherhood's laws, the most important and most decisive or divisive of these issues is the official racial policy of the Brotherhood. Behind the simple goal of establishing Aryan supremacy lurks a complex web of intricacies that have divided the Brotherhood into competing factions. It seems every officer has their own answer for how the Brotherhood should formally define and divide the races, and any plan other than their own is a betrayal of Aryanism and a Slavic plot. Screaming matches and even brawls have occurred over everything from the legal status of half-Aryans to the different shapes of Untermensch skulls. Fear of Wagner has become increasingly agitated as he has watched this infighting bring, bring the Brotherhood to his granting hope. To finally resolve the issue, he has announced that he will form a council that will formally define the racial caste of Russia. The Führer will head this council himself, but it will include several other important figures in the Brotherhood, most, include, most notably Siegfried Schulz. Schultz has become a leader of the faction advocating for an expanded definition of Aryanism that he claims will act as a safeguard against instability and provide a necessary boost to Brotherhood membership. The Fuhrer is personally repulsed by his ideas, but his supporters are too significant to ignore any longer. When the council assembles in a few weeks' time, every faction will have a chance to make their case. But only one faction can prevail. Brigadiers, coup of the Republic of Ireland? Oh, bloody time for Brittany. Untermensch. All of them. Alright, so with this one, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. I want more growth. And, more, and better poverty rate. Because this is not good for us. Very not good for anybody. We are Untermensch. Poverty? None. No Ubermensch shall live in poverty. The end of the Reichstadt. Your strength is just an accident arising from the weakness of others. Africa breeds. Joseph Conrad. Was he a famous writer? I forget. He sounds very familiar to me. Southern Euros, huh? Russian reunification, huh? Cast stuff. Good. How is this looking? Oh, we have debts? <laughs> no, no, no. No debt. No, no. Ubermensch do not have debts. For the purity of the race. For the survival of the blood. 
the way to freedom. Well, let's go in with for the purity of the race. Fear of Wagner has outlined two goals for the Brotherhood in this time of national reclamation. Defend the Aryan's race purity and guarantee the survival of the Aryan bloodline. As we build a new nation for our master race in the fertile lands of Russia, we must not forget why we are undertaking this mission. The Aryans are the chosen people, the rightful masters of the humanity. While we consolidate our rule, we shall remind the members of the Brotherhood that our d duties are not over simply, just because we are not at war for the moment. Any savage can conquer a wilderness, but only an ubermensch can civilize it. The Brotherhood will task its soldiers with this civilizing mission. We will order them to purify the lands they have subjugated, making them safe and productive, introducing a spirit of racial pride to the Aryans that we have liberated. The Brotherhood cannot afford to delay on this issue. While none dare oppose our dominance of Western Russia, our race's sanctity is still at risk. Only when we have achieved total control over our territory, transforming it from a war-torn wasteland into a productive, prosperous, and unified state, will the Aryan people be secure. A rational debate, of course. And lastly, I don't know if you and your thugs are Slavs, traitors, or just cowards. Wagner roared at the man across the table, but I know you are weaklings and you want to see the Aryan race weakened with you. Schultz stared back at him. He had hardly spoken it all night, but somehow that silence was louder than all of the Fuhrer's shouting. Wagner paused his tirade to catch his breath and shoots a seed's opportunity. My Fuhrer, I am no coward. I am a proud servant of the Brotherhood. But before all else, I serve the Aryan race, and the Brotherhood is failing them right now. There are millions of Aryans in Russia who would make exemplary members of the Brotherhood. But they are enslaved. You have labeled them Untermensch because they failed to meet some arbitrary standards that you set years ago. It shows strength and wisdom to admit that you were mistaken, and yet you refuse to. If there's a coward in this room, it is you. For the first time that evening, Wagner was speechless. He had entered the room confident of his victory. He had expected the council to be a mere formality, a chance to berate his advisors for their squabbling before they all fell in line. Instead, he had watched the tide turn against him. The more Schultz spoke, the more men seated at the table seemed intrigued by his promises of an Aryan majority within a generation and an end to slave unrest. For even some of Wagner's closest allies were struggling to hide their doubt on their faces, and now this upstart had the bowels to catch, cause own fear a coward. Wagner could still see that he had some support in the room. If he acted now before Schultz could tip the scales any further, that he might prevail. I recommend you be more careful with who you call a coward, he said. I don't care how many of the boys you like you. I don't... I won't tell her another slip up. He turned to the address the rest of the counselors. Now I say we settle this the only way that seems fair. I'll vote. Wagner and his hardliners win. Only the best are by Aaron. Schultz and his saviors win. Freedom for all Aryans. Freedom, freedom, freedom. That's why we're only making one division here at a time. If we want to be really bad, we'll make these guys 40 combat with. Uh, actually, let's not do that yet. Because we do need to put some support coming on here too. Ooh, do we have support comments? We do not. What a shame. Get at least one on them at all times. There you go. Guns looking pretty good too. You know what? Let's go two. There you go. Engineers are super important. We could put some main battle tanks, but we don't have enough battle tanks for anybody for that. Actually, that's not bad. Minus 200 would not be... That's not too bad, actually. And it gives us quite a bit of armor. Screw it. We're going to do that. Anti-air, anti-tank. Um, do we have enough anti-tank to do with this? Maybe we do. Yeah, why not? Beautiful. Ubelmensch. We have our normal divisions, then we have the Ubelmensch. Hmm. Purchase toad artillery, we don't deal with these scum anymore. There's a Taust equipment. Ha! Next up, the spirit. In a reclamation of Russia, we've liberated many Aryans who have endured this tyranny and oppression from the Slavic warlords that have lived under. One might assume our brothers and sisters would welcome us with open arms as we ended their enslavement and raised them to positions befitting their racial status. Instead, they've been hesitant to embrace the Brotherhood and abandon their old lives. Across our realm, tens of thousands of pure Aryans are victims of brainwashing by their subhuman neighbors, trickled into believing that they are no better than anyone else. We must make every effort to break the delusion and bring all members of the Master Race into the Brotherhood. Our government will launch campaigns to educate Aryans on their own superiority and the dangers of fraternizing with other races. We will place members of the master race in charge of the old community communities. The former neighbors becoming their slaves as a natural divide between the castes is restored. Brotherhood chapters will organize festivals across the nation celebrating Aryan history and heritage and formally in inducting eligible locals into the Brotherhood. A sense of national and racial pride shall emerge all across our new nation, overshadowing any identity of the past. Oh, cool. Caring for you... Caring for your child by Guthrum Wagner. Words to live by. Absolutely. Those are some great words, Wagner. Really, really great words. More growth. Oh, wow. That, that is, interest is not good. But, hey, 5.7. Pretty nice. And yet, we're still trying to integrate more places, aren't we? Yeah, that sucks. Oh, we almost have Ak Angus, which would be very good, and we could stop losing all that weekly stability. And get three more cores, so that's actually really nice and get some more factories, hopefully. Well, maybe. 
14 days. Cool. And I'm going to go to this side for the survival of the blood. The Brotherhood has been given two missions by the Fear of Wagner. Defend the Aryan race's purity and guarantee the survival of the Aryan bloodline. As the people for forge a new state that will be the eastern home of the Aryan people, we cannot forget why they must not fail to meet these goals. The Aryan bloodline is a pinnacle of evolution, the biological expression of perfection. As we consolidate our control, we must undertake every effort to entrench this bloodline into Russia so it will never be removed from its rightful home. We cannot be satisfied with ruling Russia. The Aryans must become the true children of the motherland. The Brotherhood will begin simultaneous programs of cultural assimilation and eradication. We will spread Aryan culture, traditions, and language all to encourage the people, our people, to accept their new heritage. To increase the progress of our racist entrenchment, we will erase non-Aryan culture and elements from the East. The histories of the Slavs and other subhuman peoples will end, and the inferior Russian tongue will be eventually be phased out entirely. While some may consider these steps extreme, they are necessary. We cannot allow the Untermensch to corrupt our bloodline again, not when we have finally achieved purity. Beautiful. And let us conclude with... Oh, industry? Yeah, let's get... Uh, we're quite behind on a couple things, but regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow, when we shall begin, hopefully with a thrust into the Euros. Thanks for watching, and have a great, purified rest of your day.